This is Lecture 4, Systematic Explanations for Interstate War for Political Science 4327, Introduction to International Relations. War is inefficient compared to reaching negotiated settlements. Uncertainty, inability to make credible commitments, and disputes revolving around winner-take-all issues exacerbate the risk of war. Neorealism offers a popular structural theory of war, but some of its hypotheses do not follow logically from the theory's assumptions. Other important neorealist hypotheses are falsified by the historical record. Power transition theory, another popular structural theory of war, is more logically consistent than neorealism. Its predictions are more strongly supported by historical evidence. However, even power transition theory has weaknesses and needs to be reconsidered, especially with regard to its approach to domestic politics. War between states is on the decline, but domestic wars, insurrections, and military interventions are becoming more frequent. War is a relatively infrequent event, but it remains extraordinarily deadly. Estimates of war-related deaths per year vary from 1 to 2 million. War is the most egregious breakdown of international cooperation. Yet states often manage to cooperate during wars. International agreements discipline behavior in wartime. Many theories attempt to explain wars. Popular explanations focus on religious, cultural, or civilization differences, on economic asymmetries, or on psychological factors. The outcome of war suggests war is a premeditated act. Initiators of war win over 60% of the wars they start. 93% of domestic initiators win from Ryder and Sham in 2002. 43% of defenders lose, and 11% end up with a draw. So the puzzle is, why do defenders not make a deal before enduring the costs of war? War involves transaction costs in lost life and property and is ex post in inefficient. Costs could be avoided if the adversaries could find an ex ante negotiated agreement. According to Fearon, 1995, the ex ante problems leading to war can be reduced to three factors uncertainty, which is also asymmetric information, commitment problems, and indivisibility of issues. Uncertainty. Asymmetric information or uncertainty about the opponent's capabilities, morale, outside help, etc. makes rational actors arrive at different conclusions about what they can win and lose in war. Commitment problems. Even if an ex ante settlement can be reached, in an inability to credibly commit to respect its terms make an agreement difficult. Indivisible. Indivisibility issues. Indivisible objectives such as winning or losing sovereignty stand in the way of ex ante agreements because the winner gets everything and the loser gets nothing. The conflict between Israel and Palestine may well reflect three of the, uh, all three of these problems. Their dispute can be understood in terms of the same spatial and expected utilities we use for the North Korea U.S. issue. If you see in figure 5.1, it basically sets up a zero or one um, outcome, okay? Neither side can negotiate anything because Palestine will only recognize no Israel and Israel refuses to negotiate if their existence is not recognized. Neorealist theories believe the distribution of power in the international system is a major factor in determining whether international affairs are stable or unstable. Instability refers to the changes in the composition of the international system, especially when key states emerge or disappear following large wars. Key states, essential actors, are those necessary to counteract a threat from a rival coalition of states. Neorealists are particularly concerned with the causes of big wars that threaten the survival of great powers. Recall neorealist, neorealist theorists start with these assumptions. First, international politics are anarchic. Second, states as rational unitary actors are the central actors in international politics. 
States that seek to maximize security above all else and consider other factors only if security is satisfied. States seek to increase their power as long as it does not diminish their security. A state's gain in power may threaten other states and lead them to, to form an uh, opposing coalition, leaving that state less, sec less secure, a phenomenon known as the security dilemma. Neorealists derive three hypotheses about the threat of war or instability. Bipolar systems are more stable than multipolar systems. States engage in balancing behavior so that power becomes more or less equally divided among states over time. States mimic one, uh, one another's behavior. Neorealists claim there is more uncertainty in multipolar systems which makes less stable which makes them less stable than bipolar ones. Bipolarity is supposed to alleviate uncertainty and commitment problems. Neorealists compare, for example, great power alliances preceding World War I to alliances during the Cold War. The ambiguity of World War I alliance commitments stands in sharp contrast to the clarity of the Cold War. As you see in section 5.2, or uh, figure 5.2 in your text, it links all of how these countries um, uh, form alliances both before and after. So there it is in 1914, and there it is, figure 5.3 in 1989. The argument that bipolarity produces less uncertainty does not follow from the four neorealist premises. None of the four hypotheses address the relationship between uncertainty and stability. Uncertainty may make decision makers more, not less cautious. Different leaders may respond differently to uncertainty. Multiple distribution of power can occur under multipolar multipolarity. Some of them can be stable, others cannot. Using the neorealist logic, it is possible to show that a multipolar world can be more stable than a bipolar one. Suppose there are 300 units of power in the world. In a bipolar world, a perfectly bipolar world, A equals 150, B equals 150. This is stable, and but very unlikely in reality. But A equals 151 and B equals 149 is unstable. In multipolar one, A equals 75, B equals 74, C equals 75, D equals 74, and E equals two. E is never expendable because they can block any coalition. Multipolar world two, A equals 78, B equals 74, C equals 73, D equals 73, E equals two. In this case, E is a non-essential actor, showing that multipolar worlds can be either stable or unstable. A true balance of power is essential for stability in a bipolar world, but not necessarily in a multipolar one. One could object that states cannot be sure whether their be sure of their advantage unless that advantage is very low. Bipolar systems may be stable even when power is not perfectly or equally distributed. Suppose nation A believes with probability P that it can defeat nation B. Define P as the ratio of nation A power to the sum of A and B's power. Nation A will not attack nation B if the probability of winning plus 1 minus P on the probability of state A losing is less than the status quo that they currently have. Suppose A values winning 1 equals 1 and losing equals 0. Rearranging the terms, we find that the probability has to be greater than the status quo minus losing over the winning minus the losing. Substituting the utility values of 0 and 1, we get that P is greater than the utility of the status quo for country A minus zero 
over 1 minus 0. This implies that nation A will not attack B if P is greater than the expected utility of A under status quo. And nation A will attack P if P is greater than the utility for nation A under the status quo. The decision depends on how much A likes or dislikes the status quo. States that sufficiently dislike the status quo may still attack even if they are weaker. States that like the status quo may not risk aggression even if they are stronger. Imagine nation's A power is 60 and nation B is 240 and that the expected utility for A for the status quo is 0.1. In this case, P, remember it's A over A plus B, 60 divided by 60 plus 240, which is 300, equals 0.2. A prefers to fight even with such a low probability of victory because it's deep dislike for the status quo. These conclusions contradict real assumptions, especially the fourth assumption that states that, that states pursue increased power only when survival is at stake. Taking a quote from Waltz, in anarchy security is the highest end. Only if survival is assured can states safely seek such other goals as tranquility, profit, and power. Claims about polarity and stability can be evaluated by looking at the relative duration of different international systems. The modern international system began in 1648 and was multipolar until 1945, which is 247 years. It was bipolar from 1945 to 1989, which is 44 years. It has been unipolar from 1989 to the present. Given the duration of the first multipolar system, multipolarity appears more stable than bipolarity. It is also possible to look at the duration of time periods in which the number of major powers remained unchanged. Figure 5.4 in your book shows this um, longevity in years. Okay? As you see, the highest ones in 1617, then uh, 1740, and then kind of tied between 1556 and 1808. Okay? The first bipolar system was neither usually long, unusually long nor short. It is possible to assess system stability by examining the frequency of wars between major powers. Excluding proxy wars in the Korean War, where the United States and China fought, there were no major wars during the Cold War. There are several ex alternative explanations to explain this long piece, especially nuclear deterrence. Looking at intervals between major power wars between 1648 and the Cold War, 44 years of peace, is not an unusually long period. Null and colleagues in 1989 identified four more central conclusions based on neorealist neo assumptions. Essential states never become inessential. Essential states are never eliminated. Austria-Hungary and the Soviet Union were essential, but became inessential and were eliminated from the international system. Inessential states never become essential, and inessential states are always eliminated. The United States was, an innocent, was inessential in the 19th century, and today it is an essential place. Power transition theory shares with realism the focus on the importance of power in international affairs. Breaks with balance of power by arguing that the international system is not anarchic but hierarchical. It assumes that states seek to maximize preferred policies and control over rules and customs governing international interactions. States differ in their satisfaction with the status quo. The most powerful dissatisfied states are the greatest threat to peace and stability. System transforming conflicts occur when a dissatisfied state gains enough power to challenge the status quo. The international hierarchy, according to power transition theory, is shown in figure five.
power transition theory is consistent with Robert Gilpin's hege hegemonic stability theory. The dominant state imposes and enforces rules and norms that govern international politics. For example, after World War II, the United States promoted the Bretton Woods Agreement, the current free trade regime, NATO, and the United Nations. Conflict arises when a dissatisfied state grows strong enough to challenge the authority of the hegemon. It is unlikely for the dominant state to allow the challenger to supersede it in power. A challenger is reluctant to fight before it has sufficient power to win. Contrary to neorealism, power transition argues that rough parity in power promotes conflict, not peace. To some extent, power transition focuses our attention on domestic politics. It argues that a challenger emerges as a result of differential growth rates. The main hypothesis of power transition and war is seen in figure 5.6. As you see, the challenger, as the challenger goes up and time goes forward, whenever they pass the dominant state's lines, that is where you're in the highest likelihood for war. Not all prediction of power transitions logically follow from the theory. However, the, international, the historical record is more consistent with this perspective, as you see in 5.2. When power was unequal, four, does war occur? No, or yes. It seems to be closer to the historical record than neorealism.